everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, April 2-4, 2024, left at 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a Time for Change call tonight at around... p.m. Eastern, give or take. And when we say being here now, sounds simple. But these three words contain inner work for a lifetime. To live in the here and now is to have no regrets about the past, no worries or expectations for the future. Be fully present in each moment of existence is to live in total contentment, in peace and love. To enter into this presence is to reside in a different state of being. In a timeless moment, in the eternal present. Now, once you touch this state of pure being, you can never completely forget it. You begin to see how your thoughts keep carrying you away from being in the moment. But being is always here never more than a thought away. There's nothing to do, nothing to think about. Just be here and now. Now, when our thinking mind subsides, what we might call our heart mind takes over. And we can begin to live in love. Love is opening to merge with another being. Whether with another person or with God, in the end, they're the same. Love is the doorway to oneness with all things, to being in harmony with this entire universe. This return to oneness, to a simplicity of just being, of deep eternal love, is what we all long for. This unified state is the real union. Perhaps. We are ready, already, an evolved soul who is separated from the one only by the most gossamer of veils, thin, thin veils. And our enlightenment will be nearly instantaneous. Or maybe... we are more tentative seekers whose minds pull us this way and that way. And we need more constant reminding of where our true self lies. Whatever your karmic situation is, for most of us, it is helpful to set aside some time in each day to devote to spiritual practice. Now, we're not talking religion, church, or any of that stuff. Now, this means scheduling time in our already busy lives. Path of the heart is not hard or easy, but it takes time and intention. Traditionally, The best times are early morning, while the world is still quiet 
during the evening at the close of the day's activities. Consider this your time to explore your own inner being, to find more of the meaning of your life. Spiritual practice offers us a chance to come back to the innate compassionate quality of our heart and to our intuitive wisdom. Like shopping for a new set of spiritual clothes. Try on these practices of self-reflection, opening the spiritual heart or selfless service and see what fits. Then take a look in your mirror and see who you are now and what works for you. Each of us has our own path to follow, our own karma. We have to honor our own unique path. We can't imitate someone else's trip. Listen to your heart to hear what you yourself need. Take what you can use from these practices and leave the rest. So we have, there's, there's so many avenues that we can embrace. It's just up to us. It just depends on what we're feeling about ourselves, about this planet, about everything. And we are all running away from ourselves. Yeah. Whatever parts we are running away from always end up becoming what we run towards at some point. In this lifetime or the next. Learn how to embrace your fear, love your fear, and you will form a deeper spiritual respect for this life. You will appreciate all variations of this life and not just be seeking to have easy, good days. Find what it is you truly fear, love, See, we fear there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Now, we fear, we fear fear, we fear love, we fear intimacy, we fear success, we fear failure, we fear death, we fear life. Whatever it is, invite it in and see how all your ancient phobias instantly flip around and become waves of enthralling fascination. You have fun. You can look forward to each meeting you have with fear, and when you do, you've truly mastered the game. When you sit and you contemplate, or in, in, in the quiet time of this meditation, You embrace all of them. All of them. Only you know what your fears are. No one knows all your fears. And only you can address them. And we're, see, we're all, we are all so deeply consumed by this world every day. From the moment we open our eyes in the morning, the mind kicks into high gear, supercharged, and we are flooded with all sorts of beliefs, emotions, and desires. It can become very easy in this day and age to feel overwhelmed, lost, or confused, and a lot of people in this very moment do. We are constantly dealing with a massive amount of information and social pressure every day. 
pressures with finances, relationships, love life, family, work, and health problems are at the foundation. And then there's our newly found, what? All this technology keeps pumping in every day something new, something here. The latest, the best, the greatest. And in our relationships with that technology. You know, it's just, you've got these smartphones, you have the Internet, and we have the texting, and umpteen other things. And a lot of people, not, not, not a small, but majority, spend half their day just trying to figure out how to get through it alive. And you can see, as a watcher, what's actually taking place. This technological error that we are in deeply is so captivating that we can easily miss out on the actual connection with our amazing spiritual existence. Imagine if we were all surrounded every day every day by people whose only interest was in achieving enlightenment. How do you think in this very moment that this world would be? Yet, we have chosen a planet where everyone is still deeply asleep to their divine and light nature. And that's a fact. You, you all see it as you watch, not judge. So this deeply asleep to their divine and light nature. In fact, we are all so asleep that we don't even know that we are asleep. And the majority of humans are sleepwalking through this life, meaning that we are always plugged into the mind. The veil is so thick for so many of us, and the pattern is so deep that we need to use everything we've got to just wake up. This means using everything we can find outside of us and inside of us. How, when was the last time you were excited? Truly, genuinely. Okay. Any real ecstasy is a sign you are moving in the right direction. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. St. Teresa of Avila. So, is it a choice? Yeah, it's a choice. So what are we doing? Are we doing everything we can to find God? Well, who's God? Where is God? Where is God out there? Up there? In, in, this, in some place outside? No. God is us, the real you. And, it's, and to do everything we can to find that God. It's like you use all your senses everywhere you go. Touch, taste, feel, hear, even breathe in the smell of the divine. Use every moment of your free time to find deep silence, stillness, and inner peace so you can connect deeper with the divine. 
Use the use anything media all all ex- all that excessive advertising is constantly dumped on us. And use that when you read something, it jumps out to you. Notice how its spiritual message is just for you. When you feel like you might be making some form of connection to God. Breathe that feeling deeply into your body. Stop everything. Give this experience all that you've got. Because it might not last too long. Notice how the feeling resonates with what's going on in your life. Find the practical aspects like, how is this, whatever it may be, how is this, that, I, that I'm seeing give me the deepest guidance I'm needing in my relationships right now. How many times do we use the word coincidence? Oh, that's just a coincidence. Yeah, you know, coincidence is a word we invented to explain things away that we don't understand. God is always always around us. We only have synchronicity in this life. Everything is perfect and divinely aligned. The God source never, ever makes mistakes. And when you are 100% devoted to finding total alignment with the divine in everything around you, the magic will its way into you. It's the, a lot of people, you know, they kind of half-ass it. You know, it's, uh, it's skeptical people, the protective pessimists or the mind addict that is super smart intellectual. It's not for those. It's for that ordinary being who has devoted their entire life and soul to something beyond this world. It's for that simple soul who wants to create the deepest, healthiest relationship with themselves and the God source. The biggest difference of all, perhaps, is that their connection with God is their highest priority all throughout the day. And it all starts with us You make the decision. You decide. You choose. To begin, you know, the journey deeper from the understanding that you surrender everything. You let go of everything. You let go of your entire life. To date. So what does that mean? You're no longer attached to it. You're no longer attached to it. You're no longer attached to any of that stuff. And it's like all that can be taken away. So you you realize that it's temporary, all of it. No matter how your ego mind drives you to stick to it like super glue, what is the one thing that cannot be taken away? The only one, only one. You, the God that you are, 
the pure consciousness. What is the only thing that is real? I mean, really real. What is the only thing that's real? You, divine consciousness, the God, kingdom of God, the heaven. Everything else? You don't change. The God that you are does not change. Ever. Sure. You step up to different levels of pure consciousness or divinity. But you're divine perfection already. That's, you just don't change. Everything else changes. What do you know? Okay. Does your body change? Sure it does. So what does that mean? It means your body isn't real. I know a lot of people would say, well, that's crazy. Sure is. I can pinch myself. I can cut myself. I can bruise myself. It's like a holographic image. The software and the programming is really up to par. You can't tell whether it's false, fake, or real. You can't tell. To you, it's real. You can touch it, hold it, interact with it. Real. So when we, uh, I mean, truly discover this, where's our devotion? Is it in the material world? Physical material world, physical material body. Man-made religions. Man-made religions. Over 60,000 of them on this planet. That's absolutely absurd. And we choose to reprogram ourselves. Because you start, some of us just start, it's almost like you're walking along and you keep tripping on something. You don't, but you, and you go back and you look around and you say, there's nothing there for me to trip on. Right? And so then you move over and you go another way and you're going along and you trip on something, but you can't see anything there to trip on. And then it gets really frustrating, right? And then you're walking along a different different road or street and you trip again and so you got so conditioned to believing that there's something there that you were tripping on this time you look down and there is an imperfection in the road that you trip on we create it doesn't it make sense that we are all gods all supreme consciousness that we are the one, we are the God. See, there is no separate God. There never was. But doesn't that make sense? Okay, so this is the only thing that can't be taken away, the gods that we are. Everything else can. Now, how do we entertain ourselves? Really, truly. I mean, we are omnipotently, supremely powerful beings that never die. Okay? Master manifestors, master creators. So how do we entertain ourselves? We create. We create things and places and planets and trees and mountains and oceans and lakes and rivers. We create. This entertains us, doesn't it? Don't we become entertained? Sure we do. 
most of us get so entertained that we forget completely about our spiritualness. And we spend all, just about all of our time in what? Out there. Well, it makes sense that we entertain ourselves, so we, do, we, we interact with that. Sure we do. And, and it, it's endless, isn't it? All the things and all the stuff that we can indulge in. And we can all create the life we want to entertain us even more. But we get so bogged down and we deny our spiritual selves, the gods that we truly are in these bodies, and we put all of our time and effort to the physical material self. Which you can't... I mean, it's, it's very seductive, isn't it? And, and, and then many of us become immersed in it. And we become so immersed in our own creations that we aren't aware that we actually created them to experience them. Not everybody likes the color blue. Not everybody likes the color green. Or, and so on. Or red. You see how our perspectives are different while each, every one of us are in these bodies. It's all different, isn't it? Great. It, it keeps us entertained. And so then we create certain adventures. Not, of, not all of them are really fun and happy, you know. We, we create some that are very challenging and drawing and, and uh, hiring. And then when I ask, why would I create this? There's no way I would create this for myself. And you say, well, what are you learning? Created this to experience it for a reason. I think some people believe that the only way they would create anything would be all fluffy and soft and nice. But that's not it. We're creating everything and then some at every angle, every avenue, every which way but loose. All directions. And when you realize, when, when we all realize that There's a thousand, well, let's just put it this way. There's a million doors, thousands of paths to enlightenment, a million doors we can walk through to experience this moment as divine. We are also often unaware whenever we are passing judgment and obvious of how it is a secret passageway to the most enlightened and heavenly state of being. It's no matter if we are conscious human beings or not. The mind is constantly judging ourselves, other people, this world, and anything that it can get a hold of. It was born with this master-like judgeaholic power. It can judge anything in milliseconds. And you may not have realized this. Yet, probably in the last 15 minutes, your mind has 10 judgments on yourself, someone else, or something in the world around you as either good or bad. The judgment, the judgmental mind is perpetually busy working away at labeling this life. Labeling it. Why do you think we have so many labels on everything? And this workaholic 
is a slippery gremlin to catch. That's what the mind is. We are so accustomed to the mind judging everything in this life. It's as if we've been soaking our hands forever and we don't realize that our, the skin has fallen off of our hands. It's almost like when you put a frog in a pot and the water starts to slowly but surely boil, the frog is unaware that it's being cooked alive. So, just to clarify exactly what judgment is, it is the mind labeling something in this life as either good or bad, but not both, not both, not both. It is a one-sided viewpoint of existence, which separates and divides, interestingly, judgments manifest. Judgment manifests only when we are living up in the head and are disconnected from our heart. Now, when we are living from the heart, truly, truly, not superficially, I talk with a lot of people that say they're living from the heart. All you've got to do is say a couple words, you know they're in the head. See, the mind, when, when we are living from the heart, the mind cannot judge. Why? Where is the mind? Yesterday and tomorrow. Where are we in the now? Does the mind exist in the now? No. Now, this occurs because the heart is free from duality. And the mind can only exist in duality. Being black and white, that's the mind. That's our minds, black and white. The heart cannot get hooked and whatever the mind believes is only good or bad, only good. When the heart is leading the way, we are free from the perpetual prison of the judging mind. It's there so that we can, what? Master it so that we leave it alone and we watch it. See, we see how it works. They're judging, we're learning. Now, if we are to be free from judgment, we have got to drop out of the head and into the heart. It's just, that's it. And guess what? The mind will quiet and become very still from this space. We can watch our mind closely and see just how slippery its judgmental habit is. And we can see how it tends to avoid what it deems as scary. And it often believes that if I get what I want, this is good, then I'll be happy. And if I get what I don't want, this is bad, and then I'll be unhappy. And the more enlightened path, however, is understanding that in this great divine supreme all intelligent universe, we are going to get it all. We always, always, always get what we want and what we don't want. It's like wherever there's good, there's bad, and wherever there's bad, there's good. Now, we're not talking, you know, catastrophic bad, but there's yin and yang. There's always yin and yang, always both, both sides. Have you ever experienced it? Oh, I'm, we all have. None of us are exempt from it. You might, um, you might manifest your, your dream partner, soulmate, twin flame. 
Only to later realize that they trigger your deepest, darkest issues and childhood insecurities to surface every day. Right? Or perhaps we spend half our lives running in the great societal rat race, being devoted to striving, achieving big luxurious dreams, and becoming financially free, only to realize later that we missed out on so many beautiful sunsets while we're indoors chasing some fantasy. Life is always both. We get death, we get birth. We always get both. And this polar opposite is inside everything that exists. The yin is contained within the yang and the yang within the yin. The more often we practice seeing, feeling, and, to, and accepting how we always get what we want and what we don't want in this life, the judgmental mind just drops on its own accord. We naturally start living every day in deep harmony with existence. We become vulnerable to existence again. And in this sweet humility, we can feel the great perfection of this life. We deeply accept that this existence is the expression of the highest intelligence and that the good and bad judgment plan is the smartest plan available from God to create a spiritual awakening experience inside every being on this earth. Now, I, I, I would challenge anyone to see if they could find a single situation, person, or thing of this world that is only 100% positive and does not also have the tiniest hidden negative byproduct within it. It's like conversations like this go on on this planet all the time. What's going to happen when Ethel receives those billions of dollars in the RV? What's going to happen? I don't know, you know. Is she going to turn into a loony or going to be very careful and quiet? These are the little things. And I guarantee you that we're always going to find, and it could be the tiniest negative, but it's still there. It's like even if you find a, a, like a new flower budding, uh, the flower is going to end up what? Going away. Not there forever. Same with the sunset. Sunset, sunset will go away. There's always Another side to the coin. Always. No matter what your ego mind tells you, we have daylight. And then we have night. Yin and yang. It's not always going to be daylight. Even on any place of the planet where you get a lot of daylight, but there's eventually going to be darkness. All of us will come in this journey that we're all on, will come to the full conclusion of understanding is that we will free ourselves from the judgment habit. We will free ourselves from the ego mind. We will free ourselves from attachments and expectations. And we do this by, by looking deeper into ourselves and accept any judgments we may have. 
You just accept them. You let go. You don't harp on them. You don't fixate on them. You know, is I'm too fat, I'm too short, I'm too ugly, too poor, too dumb, too smart, too much, too much in my head. So what you do is you say, hey, everyone, all, all of my judgments, come on in. Welcome all of you. I don't reject or avoid or judge any of you. You see them for what they are. They are one-sided judgments that you have about you. And when you can truly see and welcome the judgment, it's going to have less energy and magnetic pull on you. In a matter of minutes, the contracting hard feeling around the judgmental thought will lessen, drop into stillness, and you will become truly free from it. See, because we all we you know we all judge ourselves, all of us, different ways. As far as this welcoming process works, the discovery is moving totally into the experience of judging. And when you consciously are feeling only one side of the judgment, awareness grows in you. You cannot fall into that old judgment again so easily next time. You can see just how it impacts your mind, emotions, heart. When you remain in one-sided experience of life deeply and fully for a long time, something inside of you will soon tire. And then the judgment pendulum just swings to the other side. Now, how many people say to themselves that they are never good enough, that they can't do anything right? After welcoming that judgment and feeling for about 5, 10, or even 20 minutes, something in you will exhaust itself, release the contraction, wake up. So this is a more a smaller, more enlightened aspect inside of us will sneak in and perceive that on some level we are doing everything right and we are totally good enough. And when we, be, when we welcome judgment, the judgment pendulum soon swings and this allows us to know what perfect peace feels like. Imagine if you you, you weren't cons- you didn't have any connection or attachment or expectation or worry or stress or fear about what other people think of you. Period. Cross board. And you had no judgment path. You you had surrendered the judgment of yourself and everything around you. Now, some people may think that always welcoming and acknowledging both the good and bad in this life is just some boring, fatalistic, nihilistic, uncreative path that only leads to a state of what? Apathy. This, quite the contrary, is true. By learning to accept and welcome it all, we find we are truly okay with everything that is and feel a more spacious quality within ourselves. We feel we have more time to develop our abilities to expand our consciousness, relax into our lives. From this expanded place, we dramatically increase our manifesting vibrations. We deepen our state of inner peace, and we become a magnet for the most amazing life situations to occur. See, you'll find, if you haven't already, that the welcoming process is extremely powerful simply because it leaves nothing out. 
It comes from deep, a deep spiritual place inside you that is saying yes to the totality of your existence. You are not interested in fighting, proving anything, or resisting life anymore. Instead, you move and feel totally fluid like water, without resistance, force, or control. And in this state, it's so easy to realize that God is everywhere and in everything. I join you in meditation. I'll return to close this up.
Take an, take an easy breath in through the nose. An easy breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Our real power in this life doesn't come from money, prestige, material luxuries, or physical strength. These things can all be taken away from us. True power comes from that which is permanent. It's found by discovering the one thing that cannot change or be destroyed. Focus on the one thing which does not change or die in this life. It is not far away. In fact, it's closer to you than your next thought. And by accessing your real power, you are no longer a victim to issues from your past or trying to manage who you will become in the future. To find your real source of power, look inward where the source of your consciousness is coming from. This subtle energetic fountain of bliss is who you are. Take this precious day today. Explore who and what you truly are. Pay close attention to this infinite stream of consciousness. Surrender the flow of its permanent and unchanging awareness all day long. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and following morning. We will return here tonight for the TFCC call around 9, 9.15 or so p.m. Eastern. And Thursday, April 25, 2024, 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal gratitude at all times. Watch the magic begin.